Hi, you're listening to the New Space India podcast, a bi-weekly talk show that exclusively brings insights from the Indian space activities ecosystem. I'm your host Narayan, the co-founder of India's first space-focused think tank, Spaceport Sarabhai. Guests on the New Space India podcast help you understand space activities related macro and micro trends within India in all aspects including space history, local industry, space science, technology evolution, law and policy, art and more. The New Space India podcast is supported by Dassault Systems, a global leader in providing businesses and people with collaborative virtual environments to enable sustainable innovations. Dassault Systems Solutions supports startups, small and medium scale enterprises and original equipment manufacturers in developing disruptive solutions for space launchers and satellites. Uh hi guys this is Rifat here I'm the chief technology officer and lead scientist of Space Kids India so I am responsible for designing the satellites bus architecture anything everything related to the technology here I take care of it uh I'll, I'll just give a overview of how I, how I got started into this and you know so far we have done 28 missions like uh, 18 balloon set missions two suborbital missions and three orbital missions and the you know three more satellites are in making but this journey started very small like uh, 500 kilometers uh, you know from chennai in a small village uh my uh, you know i loved technology from a very young age so i basically my dad was a electronics and communication professor so i was grown up in his lab so i started coding at around age 5 and i started building circuits when i was around 7 or 8 so it was a lot of fun it it used to be my toy okay i used to play with that and it was a lot of fun uh, when i was 10 my dad passed away sadly so you know after that uh, i wasn't able to learn much from him but whatever he taught me was great like uh, i was able to uh, you know study ohm's law when i was around 6 or 7 which is taught in you know 8th or 9th standard so <laughs> i i loved that part so i continued my electronics experiment so even even though my dad was a professor he la- later on in his life moved to a small village his hometown so till my 12th grade till my 18 i was grown up there only so there i was experimenting with lot of different things i love anything everything related to technology computers and electronics are my love so i used to do projects in you know coding or like in robotics like different different things i was exploring uh it was a small village so we didn't even had like a proper internet connection like uh, you know it used to be somewhere like 100 kbps you know it's a very slow uh, 2g internet <laughs> everybody in india knows that but it was enough uh, for me at that time so i started developing some robots and all those cool stuff uh my particular interest for space came when my dad was there i was watching uh, uh, the launch of uh, gslv mark 2 where in- india was launching its uh, you know own cryogenic engine my dad is a big fan of isro so he was showing me that you know india is going to launch a cryogenic engine its own stage after a long time the launch i i still remember the satellite name it was insat 4c okay i was watching that launch on a small crt tv and after the launch the uh, you know like after like few minutes the launch failed there was some issue and uh, the rocket just failed uh but that was a failure that day but that is a event which inspired me you know rocket going normal yeah it's fine but if it's exploding it's so much of fun <laughs> like <laughs> watching that i got so curious like what went wrong what went wrong i i asked my dad and he was explaining me and i was like okay uh, all the scientists and everyone you know they, they were very tense in mission control i thought okay it seems like a very cool job to sit inside the mission control and control all this stuff i think i want to do this stuff and i regretted that later when our missions failed in the you know in the future but at that time that really inspired me but uh, i didn't know what is the right path to get into the space industry because uh, even for the robotics or something we didn't had much opportunity uh, back in like uh, you know uh, 2010 that is where i i was in my middle school uh, so what happened one day is like uh, i was particip- participating in a lot of different science competition i was winning a lot of prizes and everything so one day i watched a movie called three idiots okay in that movie uh, the guy builds a quadcopter 
Okay, so I was like, uh, I wanted to build a quadcopter. So I was searching for the aerodynamics of quadcopter online. NASA also has a very beautiful, you know, like sources on uh, aerodynamics and all the things. So I went to NASA's website to study that. I, I used to be a big fan of, uh, you know, like uh, NASA student portal. It has a lot of amazing resources. So I, I use it on a daily basis. So when I was using that one day in the main NASA's website, inside there was something called uh, NASA's uh, CubeSat initiative, CubeSat launch initiative called CLSI. So till that time, I only know about space and it's cool. You are launching satellite and everything. And I was like, what is CubeSat? I clicked that and I went inside and NASA was like, you know, uh, we are inviting university students to build satellites. They were telling, you know, this is going to be the future. I was like, I was amazed. Is it possible that a satellite for one kg can be built and uh, students are building that because we never had that. So I started like searching like uh, what we are doing in India. So at the time, Anna University was the only university which launched a 50 kg satellite and not much happened. So I was like, yeah, we should do something like that here in India. So I thought, okay, I'll go and build a CubeSat and I, you know, we will convince somehow Israel to launch it. Then I Google like what are the prices? It was back in 2012, like 10 years ago. Not much CubeSat vendors were there. Only ISIS space was there. Uh, CubeSat shop was there. So I pretty much like uh, like studied everything on what are the systems needed for a CubeSat. I was in ninth standard. So you need a structure, electronic, uh, you know, power system, onboard computer communication. I thought, okay, these six systems are the basic for launching a new CubeSat. Okay, I, I wanted to build one. But I, went, I, wa I was like, okay, it's like going to Amazon and ordering something. So I went to CubeSat shop and I saw the prices. And it was like, everything was like $100,000, like eighty thousand dollars then i searched like what is the launch price and it was like uh more than like 120 130 thousand dollars for one kg i was like okay i'm done okay we can't do anything like that but since i was like exposed to electronics at a very young age i, I started uh, searching like uh what are there inside that system why is it costing so much like you know, uh, my mind didn't uh, like believe that, you know, it would cost that much to actually build an onboard computer or a communication system. But then I understood how actually things work in space industry. The money you are paying is not for the hardware, like just the manufacturing, but it is about the R&D, it is about the validation, it is about the certification and everything. And I thought, okay, uh, I thought at that point I was convinced, okay, uh, if we can do the R&D, like uh, India is very prone to like, you know, like uh, making things very economical, right? So if we can do something like that here, like scratch, develop everything from scratch, all the subsystems and everything and make a satellite very economical, maybe one day we can launch. So that is how I got the idea. Uh, so I was like uh, participating in some competitions with that idea and everything. I actually won one like uh, Indian government's national award for that, uh, you know, concept. And then... Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I love writing. Okay, I used to write, uh, write uh, science articles in a magazine, in a local magazine. So that's where, uh, you know, ma'am first time gave uh, advertisement that there is a competition called Young Scientist India is going to happen. So I was like, yeah, it looks like a like great opportunity. I think I just uh, go and participate. So I participated continuously for three years and I never won that competition because people thought, the idea and the project I took, the judges who came thought it's too advanced and there is no possibility that a child in a 10th grade could develop. Okay. And I was not good in explaining. I was able to make the stuff and I was not able to explain it to them. Like, uh, how can I, as a 10th grade, explain like what is going to be the future scope of a 1 kg satellite? People at that time were thinking CubeSat is a toy. Okay, so when we spoke to people here, the scientists here, they thought, yeah, these all are just learning to like a toy. So they were not realizing the potential for nano satellites at that point, but somehow I got convinced this is going to be the future. So I was like, I have to like, you know, do something with it. So then I was like, I directly went and met ma'am. You know, I, I used to be a very shy person, like uh, always get scared to talk to people. I was like, ma'am, I, I want to talk to you personally and uh, show this project to you. Like what is, you know, happening. And ma'am was already having very good amount of knowledge because she was already going to NASA, Russia, and what kind of satellites they're already developing and how the things are progressing there. So we met and we were like, we all, we both like wanted to do crazy stuff. 
at the time we didn't had a pressure of like raising fund or like uh, developing a minimum viable product or anything it was about developing a satellite the only goal was when i searched uh, tu delft university they have launched more than the single university has launched more than 10 satellites but in india in last uh, 13 years the amount of entire satellite student satellite we launched was you know around 10 satellites only that statistics really bothered me why indian students are not getting the same opportunity as you know people in europe or us the reason is cost we cannot go and blame i thought like we cannot go and blame the government and ask them to give free launches the thing is to make cheaper and uh, that is the time spacex was booming and i was like what they were doing for the rockets why don't we do it for the satellites so we started developing the proposal we went to you know like a uh, proposed to isro but i was in school and most of my teammates were in you know early college uh, students so people were not taking serious so we thought what's the best resource we have in hand so we can you know prove to the people so that's how we came up with the idea of uh, high altitude ballooning even that took a very you know like a hard way because uh, importing components are hard making the people understand what this balloon is hard and why you are doing it like explaining to people is hard but uh, we successfully we were able to do that and after that we started like uh, you know uh, the kalam set we built and uh, kalam set v2 by the time it was 2017 and people already started understanding what is happening around the space sector and what is the importance of nano satellites so our goal at the time was to build an entire nano satellite bus like completely fabricated in india like of course microcontroller silicon chips we don't have any facility in india to develop that but apart from the raw material the entire architecture fabrication validation everything has to be done in india and develop a fully uh, you know indigenous satellite bus so that was our goal so we can make it very economical and we can use it for a lot of different commercial purposes so we started that mission so in 2019 we launched kalam sat v1 and uh, the best mission we have done like uh, which gave me really the hope that you know we are like uh, we can compete in the international market is the esd sat which worked amazingly so we were able to qualify a 3u cube sat in space and uh, we carried a, a you know radiation monitor on board and we carried a lora transponder on board and uh, we have proven that you know the satellite works so after that we went to the azadi sat and we developed even bigger structures and everything and uh, everything worked perfectly and now we are working on the azadi sat 2 which is even bigger it is a 400 uh, mm cube so this is how we you know started this journey like uh, to think that 10 years ago i was just uh, you know sitting in a small village with my old uh, you know uh, desktop computer that 10 years later you know i visited isro's mission control center more than four five times for all our missions and we have our own mission control in our lab and we daily monitor satellites to think from that thing want you know watching it on tv and what, wanting to be like them and to actually you know like go to the clean room working with the scientists you know getting into the pslv assembling the satellite it's re- really like a dream like whatever uh, 15 year old uh, refat wanted i think i already achieved all of them you know to build system to put things in space the best feeling is like i i usually don't get excited for the launch as a spacecraft guy launch is just the beginning for me the most exciting part for me is like when the satellite do, does the first pass over our ground station and we receive the first signal from the satellite that is the most exciting part so just from thinking that and doing it on a routine basis Uh, like you know becoming a daily activity and doing it as a job like you know yeah this is just part and parcel of my life you know what you do for living yeah we build satellites that that really sounds amazing and that really also like motivates us if we can go from this to this thing in 10 years with the current progress with already having the you know all the expertise of developing everything from scratch like uh, all the systems for the cube sat the ground station software with this potential what we can do in the future you know and push things further so that is the uh, process right now we are in so right now uh, we are developing bigger satellites and now uh, we are focusing like with all the experience we are having now we are focusing it on uh, you know creating uh, commercial missions 
so soon uh, you know uh, the things are in uh, progress and uh, in future our goal is to focus on deep space missions since we are already having like uh, so many things happening in low earth orbit we felt the future is going to be the deep space mission so right now we are in process of uh, developing a lunar orbiter okay uh, i hope soon one day we will reach moon <laughs> and uh, maybe uh, i watched as a kid you know like uh, people going to moon and one day our team will you know also do the same that you know uh putting a orbiter in moon or like going to a, you know land a lander who knows in next five years what could happen but we are really excited about uh, you know like uh, pushing this further with all the capabilities we have like push it further and uh, provide a platform not just nationally but internationally you know attract the payloads from all the countries so we can do frequent low cost uh, deep space missions like what is happening right now in low earth orbit so i'm very excited about it our entire team is very excited about it uh, i hope you know uh, these are the great days to be in space industry a lot of things are happening so let's see where we are going and i hope that it will be moon or mars thank you for listening in to this episode of the new space india podcast if you enjoyed this conversation please share this episode with anyone you believe will enjoy listening to it You'll be able to find the New Space India podcast in any of the podcasting platforms that you may be using including Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube and others. Do subscribe to the podcast in case you want to receive new episodes automatically. I'm grateful if you're able to leave a rating for the podcast which will help others discover it. Thank you for listening in again and the next episode will be out in the next 2 weeks as usual.